correct arms to light up the stage. Thanks, Juzzo. Give it up for Juzzo, for Tank Youth Pastor, Young Adults Pastor. All right, I'm just going to, if you guys can just indulge me for five minutes, and um, I'm going to get the band to come up very soon. But um, I want to read tonight um, from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. So if you can just open there in your Bibles, you can read along with me. Oh, all those pages are flicking so fast I can hear it. (laughs) All right, so Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. There is a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toll? I have seen the burden that God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and do good while they live. Verse 13, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all of their toil. This is the gift from God. And verse 14 says, I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will fear him. You know, from this, it's like what Walter was talking about in Joshi, that, you know, there is a season and a time for everything. And a season is something that is a set or appointed time. A season, in a season, everything remains only for so long and everything in that season is fleeting or frail. And with a time, a time is like a set limit. It is um, as opposed to eternity. Everything has a time. It lasts but a time, but nothing is perpetual. And you know what? If we really read that whole scripture, we will see that half of it has sucky times. And like what Josh and Walter were saying, they've gone through the times, a time of death, a time of tears, a time of loss and sorrow. A time of war, hate, death, loneliness, being uprooted and so on. Yet further on it says that in all of that time, God makes it beautiful. That there is a hope in every season that we go through. And what and I want to encourage you guys tonight that there is more in you yet. And you may be in a season right now where you've got you're in a work season where it's just work 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 build up your job you may be in a grief season where you are mourning the loss of someone in your life you may be in excitement season or a new job season you may be in a season of confusion you're like god where am i meant to go from here i have no idea what i'm doing next year you may be in a season of new love you found that one and you are excited you may be in a season of singleness and you're like god where are they what's happening You may be in a season of having kids, a season of studying, depression, career advancements, engagements, whatever it is right now in this room, every single one of us is in a season. Amen? We're all in a season. Some of us, it is a hard season right now. But you know what? Some of us, we're in, you know what? It's a good season. I am enjoying this season. But whatever season you're in, it's not permanent because there is more in you yet. And you may think, you don't know, Amanda, you have no idea what I'm going through. You can't tell me that things are going to get better, that God's going to make it beautiful. And you are so right because I have no idea what you're going through. But I know that God knows everything in your season right now. And he's the one that we turn to for trust. Amen. He's the one. As we're singing in worship, how awesome is the worship team, P.S.? Amazing. And seriously brought the presence of God. And I was just, as Justin got up and he's like, cry out to God for what you want. And I was just like, you know what, God? You are my strength. You are my tower of refuge. I just cried out. And you know what? The best thing about God is that he's just there in like, he never leaves us or forsakes us. In a split second, God is with us. Amen. I loved it. 
And God wants to bring you through your seasons. You know what? You cannot stay in the same season forever. It can't be winter forever. Otherwise, everything's just going to die. Am I right? But it can't also be spring where everything's flourishing forever because it's all just going to dry up. Because you need the seasons in between to prepare for the seasons that are coming. Amen? You can't constantly just be um, in the most amazing season because um, you'll never begin to be grateful for what has come in your life. Like what Josh was saying, sometimes when you're sheltered so much, you never really understand what it is to lose something because you've never had to. I read this quote the other day and it said, if we had no winter, the spring would not be so pleasant. And if we did not sometimes taste of adversity, prosperity would not be so welcome. You know, we're heading into 2015 on Wednesday night. Come on, baby. The countdown is on. The fireworks are getting set. You've all probably got the parties happening. But um, you know what? A new year is coming. And um, we are all going to see seasons change in our life. And just as there is four seasons that we go through, we go through summer, autumn, winter, and spring. I just felt like God say to me that there is, there is four things that we'll always experience in every season, in different seasons. We will experience a season of preparation, a season of growth, a season of rest, and a season of fruitfulness. What season are you in now? What is God trying to tell you through this season? Because you know what? In every single thing, He's always trying to speak to us. I was reading Joshua the other day, and I'm just like, dude, this guy is crazy. God tells him to walk around a wall once a day for seven days. And you just think, man, God... Maybe there's stuff that you're telling me to do and it is just ridiculously sounds stupid to everybody else. But in this season, I've got to do it, amen? Just because no one else has done it or no one else is doing it doesn't mean that God's not going to tell you to do it, amen? Sometimes we need to listen to the crazy words that He's telling us to do. And through Josh, Joshua listening to that word and obeying it, he saw a whole city fall and he overcame that city. Amazing. And I wonder how many times that we have just like let go of a word of God because nobody else is doing it or nobody nobody else is in my season so I shouldn't do that because that would just be weird. You know, how many times have we wasted something? But I'll get back to it. Are you, what season are you in now? Are you getting prepared for something? Are you scaling things back, moving things around, cleaning things up, praying for something? You're in right now the season of preparation and it's okay. Are you in a season of growing where you're being molded and things are just getting stretched in your life and you feel like, I just want to quit right now, but God is just moving you around like a potter in some clay? Are you in a season of rest where you've been working so hard or you're sick and you know, or you're in hibernation time in winter and you just need to rest in God, be still and know that He's God? That season's okay too. Are you in a season of fruitfulness where this is it? You get to do what God has told you. Everything is going awesome. Whatever season you're in, it may be hard, but now is not the time to quit. Allow God to move you through every season. Amen. There is more in you yet. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. And I want to encourage you guys tonight. I know that it can be hard, but you know what? With God, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. If you want, I will stand here for an hour and quote you and build you up. (laughs) But we don't have time. But God has a promise for everything. And no matter what season you are in, there is more coming. You are not destined to stay in a season of singleness forever. You are not destined to stay in a season of poverty forever. You are not destined to stay in a season of confusion forever. But you know what happens in those seasons? We prepare, we get ready because we're listening to God. We're learning how to hear His voice. We're learning how to move forward so that we can get to our season of spring, amen? Our season of fruitfulness. So don't ever doubt where you are right now because God is with you. And I wanna encourage you tonight, if just as you stand now, I want to encourage you, please get some time with God this week before the new year comes. Figure out what season are you in now? Are you in a growing season? Are you in a resting season? Do some of you just need to stop and be still with God? 
Is this a season where you need to take time out from everybody else and just seek Him? Is this a season where you need to challenge yourself to move forward because you've just been complacent for the last couple of months? And you know, one other thing that God really spoke to me about this was comparing your seasons to someone else. So many times we might look at somebody else and think, well, why don't I have that, God? Where's my husband? Where's my baby? Where's my house? Where's my amazing job? Where's my millions of dollars? God, where's, where is it, God? And we start to like compare ourselves to somebody else. But the truth is God has got you right where He wants you right now. And the only way to move forward is to listen to what He's saying and do that. Because if you're trying to get what someone else's season's in right now, you will fail because that is not your season. If you are trying to bear fruit, if you're trying to be spring when your season is winter, all of your fruit's going to die. Amen. If you're trying to be um, summer, but it's winter time, mate, you're just going to melt because winter's here. You need to understand that we're all in different seasons. And just because you're in a different season to somebody else doesn't make you less to God. We are all God's children. And I don't know about you, but if you have kids, you don't look at them and think, oh, I hate that one, but I love this one. So I'm going to give this one everything I've got. You know, no, when you look at your kids, you think they deserve as much love as the other. And you show it in different ways, but you still love them the same. And I want to challenge you tonight. God loves you. Yes, someone around you may have what you want, but you will get there. Like Walter was saying, there is trials that we go through. And Josh, there is trials. You may get tripped up, but we keep moving forward. Amen. There is more in you yet. There is more in us as a church. There is more in us as a family. There is more in this city for next year than we could ever imagine. And if we ever stop we and stay in the season, we will never move forward. Amen. Don't ever get too comfy. Just keep seeking and listening to God and saying, God, what season am I due for now? What is coming up next? God, what do you want to say to me? Where do you want to go? I don't want to live off an old word. I don't want to live off somebody else's word. I want a fresh word from you tonight. And you know what? That is my prayer for you guys tonight, that you would receive something fresh and new from God. Because I'm telling you now, when you try and do it in your own strength, woo, you will fail. But with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. We move forward with words from Him. We need to listen to Him as a church as well, constantly having our ears set to God. Even if you don't know how to hear from God, I can tell you right now, He will speak to you in some way that you will understand. And don't doubt it. Move forward in faith. Move forward in faith. It may sound crazy like walk around a wall seven times, but hey, if it's God, you just do it anyway. And if you look like an idiot, you look like an idiot because you never know. God may be teaching you a little bit of obedience and you get stronger hearing that voice. Amen. So right now, I just want to ask, with every um, head bowed and every eye closed in this room right now. What season are you in? Do you have the privilege and honour of knowing that God is going to walk you through every season? Do you know what lies ahead? Is there a fear in your life that you're going to miss out? Tonight, if you don't know God, if you, feel, if you have no relationship with God, and you're just here by mistake or you're just here out of a whim, then I want to encourage you right now. Salvation is here for you tonight. Jesus Christ died for your sins. Everything that we do that's wrong is a sin. And back in the old times, they used to have to sacrifice animals to God just to make sure that their sins would be wiped away. But you know what? Jesus came 2,000 years ago and He sacrificed Himself as the pure Lamb of God so that we could be set free and we could have a relationship with God forever so that we would never have to sacrifice our cats and dogs anymore. And that's why nobody does anymore because Jesus paid the ultimate price for you, for you, for you. No sin is too great that God can't forgive. He loves you tonight and He is standing at the door and He is knocking and he is saying, will you invite me into your life? Will you make me your Lord and Savior? Just like Josh, he avoided God for so long. But at the end, he had to come with the 
fact that God is real, God is alive. You can't escape Him. No matter how many years you walk away and try the world and try drugs and drinking and try different relationships, that God is going to be the only thing that satisfies in the end. And I want to challenge you tonight. Give your hearts to God. Give your hearts to God. If that is anyone here and you want to say, Jesus, come be my Lord and Savior. Come live inside my heart. I want to.